What's up, folks? I'm Dwayne, and this is Blackboard Gaming, where we teach you about all these great board games that are out there, waiting to be played by you and yours. I'm a Hey everybody, <laughs> this past Labor Day weekend, I was able to attend Grand Con over in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Now Grand Rapids is like a two and a half, three hour drive from Detroit. Now we went to Grand Con for the first time last year in 2023. Usually, you know, being at Grand Con is on Labor Day weekend, I, we're not able to attend either because I have to work or that, you know, my wife's family reunion is in Kentucky. So we're usually over there during Labor Day weekend. But I've always been wanting to go ever since I got into this board game hobby. So last year, the family reunion was here in Detroit. So I suggested to Alicia, hey, let's go to Grand Con. You know, one of the selling points was the guests was Mick, Starla, and Grant from OFPG. You know, Our Family Plays Games. Now, we're contributors for OFPG Voices. And they are really, really great people. I enjoy watching all their videos. And so, the fact that they were going to be there in person, I mean, even though we've already met them in person, but it's just wonderful hanging out with them. So, I was really looking forward to that. So she was all for it. So we went on a Friday and we really had a great time. Not just hanging out with them, but hanging out with another content creator here in Michigan, Evan from Evan Diesel. We met him and his wife, Missy, and his family. And he introduced us to Comic Hunters. You know, that was the first time I got the chance to play it. So I was really, really enjoyed it you know, excited to get my hands on that, that game. So fast forward to this year, my unfortunately Alicia wasn't able to go because she ended up um, traveling with her mom down to Kentucky. So that was cool. We agreed to split up and I got the opportunity to room with my friend David from uh, Illinois. You know, we met at Gen Con a couple years ago and we've been friends ever since so that i was looking forward to just hanging out with him and playing games so i'm here to tell you about my experience at grand con the games that we played and why i love board game conventions so much you know so let's talk about the games now like i said Grand Con's convention where it's more about just playing games. And it, there, there were a few publishers there, but it's really about, like, just playing games. Now, one of the publish that was the publishers that was there was uh, All Play, you know. And All Play has some really great games. I spent a good amount of my time over in their booth during Grand Con. And one of the games that I played that I ch have championed uh, for the last couple of months is this game right here. You know, Things and Rings. Now, I've talked about this game at great length, <laughs> but I'm just going to go over it one more time. So, in Things and Rings, you have this Venn diagram in the middle of the table. And each area of the diagram represents a concept of a, 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 an attribute of an item, like one ring represents the construction of the word, like it might have, it has the letter R in it, rather. One represents the um, attributes of the word, like it's made of wood or made of metal. And the other one represents the context, like you might find this item outside. And so each player is going to get dealt a hand of item, cards that represent items. And then one person is going to be the, selected as the knower or the know-it-all. And he's going to pick three different clues for each area of the Venn diagram. And the players are trying to get rid of their item cards by placing them out in the Venn diagram based on a couple uh, preset clues out there. And they're trying to get rid of all the items in their hand. And so when they place a card out there, the knower will say if they're right, he's going to say yes, you get another turn. 
If they're wrong, he's going to take that item and place it to where he thinks it, it should go. And it might not go in either area. So it might go off the board to this area called none. It, it, if it meets none of those requirements. And then that player who plays that card is going to draw another card. Now, when I first introduced this, I introduced it to Mick and Starla and uh, Evan and Missy. And they could, and also Clay. Clay is another Michigan content creator in Grand Rapids. Him and his wife. You know, and I'm going to put a link, a link to all their videos in the description below. And so, some people like were like, I don't know if I, you know, got what's going on. But then I made sure that they knew that they were the knower. Like like Starla, for example. When she she was like wondering, okay, what's going on? But I was like, here, let's play another round. And you're the knower. And once she played the took on the role as the knower, she it, it under she understood it. She was like, oh, I see where this game is going, you know. So I think you have to be you had to play both sides to get an understanding of how this game goes. You know, and like I said, I've been showing people this game. I think it's a really uh, simple game to get into. Like I said, you're only trying to get rid of the items out of your hand. And I, I, I've taught this game a, a few times there. And I love teaching games, you know. Um, that's Things and Rings. Another game that I played over at the All Play booth is uh, River Valley Glassworks. And because I, I kickstarted that game, so I'm waiting for my copy to come in. But another game that they introduced me to that they gave me a review copy for is uh, this game, Lore. Now, Lore is just a dice checking game. You are uh, you have some six-sided die, you have a 20-sided die, and you have a 12-sided die. And you're rolling these dice out, and you're trying the results, use the results to catch fish that have certain requirements. So you might have a fish that says your result of the die roll has to be 16 or more. Or it might say it has to be eight or more, but you have to have a specific numbers. Like you might have need a six and a four showing on a result, you know, or you might have to have all the numbers have to be unequal to each other. And so the thing is, at the beginning of the round, you're going to bid how many dice you're going to roll. And it's a closed hand bid. And once you open your hand, whoever has the less dice gets to roll first so it might get if you picked five die it might get all the way to your turn of fish and it might not be any fish out there so you have to be aware of that you know it's got that push your luck uh concept going and then there are lures that you can add to your bid that might give you extra victory points for the fish you catch or it might give you a specific die face or it might you know allow you to change the pip value of a die plus one or minus one i mean this game is just really really fun i, I love the art especially on the shields because everybody has a player shield you know and the, uh, the art on the player shields it just the game just looks so peaceful for a game that's a you know it's a dice chucker so lure I, i'm glad they gave me this copy this, this is a great game now, the other game that I got from them is a game that I picked up was uh, Prey. There's a little small trick-taking game. And in Prey, you're going to get dealt uh, 12 cards. You're going to, uh, and these cards are side on one side is you uh, Prey, and one side is the Predator. And so, you're going to roll a pair of dice, and then you're going to place the dice in front of you. And one of those dice is going to represent how many tricks you need to win as the Prey, other die represents how many tricks you need to win as the predator. And so as you're and you're gonna take six of your cards and place it face down. So you're only gonna play with part of your hand the first part of the round. And then when you finish that part of the round, you're gonna pick up the other six cards and then play those cards. And then you, you get a point if you get exactly the number of tricks you needed to win as the prey. Or the predator, and the first person to get two points will win the game. You know, this is a really, really cool, like a 20-minute game. Love it. I say I, I got to get picked this up because I think this will be a great, great game to introduce to people at our board game meetup. Because that's one thing we're always looking for 
It's just games that people can gravitate to. And I think everybody's familiar with uh, trick-taking aspect. So that's Prey. Now, speaking of publishers, there's another publisher there that gave us a game from last year. And I was hoping to see him today. I mean, th that uh, this past weekend because I wanted to thank him again for giving me a copy of Obs Obsession. You know, Obsession, my wife really, really enjoyed that game. So uh, I, I was excited to see him, and, you know, hoping to see him. But I saw his brother. His brother was there. And I told him, like, pass it on. Let him know. Thank you again. My wife really enjoys uh, Obsession. Now, uh, other games that played, uh, we played uh, World Wonders. I played World Wonders with Mick and Starla and uh, Lynette and Dan. You know, it was a five-player game, and that was fun. I think I won on the tiebreaker. Uh, played uh, Pirates of Maracaibo with my friend David. Um, it's like, I love Maracaibo. Pirates of Maracaibo, I think I like better because it takes out that fiddliness of dealing with the... Uh, the factions or your reputation with France and England and Spain or whatever. You know, it's just you laying cards out and you're trapped moving your ship over those cards and taking those actions. Um, we also played this game. There's another game that I brought was um, that my uh, friend, a co-owner of one of my local board game stores, he brought this copy back from uh, Gen Con and that is Rebel Princess. You know, and I got to play this with uh, Evan and Clay and their wi and their wives. And Rebel Princess is a trick-taking game where uh, we each have a, 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 take on the role of a princess uh, that's attending the ball. You know, and we all had asymmetric powers. You know, the thing is, is it it's like hearts. Now that's what it said. I've never played hearts. But people say it's like hearts. You're trying not to get the princesses. There are princesses that are coming, trying to crash the ball. And they're worth points. And to win this game, you're trying to be the uh, player with the least points at a particular number of round, all, rounds. Also, each round has a different rule stipulation. So that really makes this game interesting, you know. <laughs> Look at it. Not today, Prince Charming. I... I this game is really, really cool. I like the art on it. And like I said, it's another trick-taking game that I'm interested in and looking forward to uh, introducing the people. Now, when I went to the convention, my original plan was not to pick up any games. I said, I'm not going to buy a game. <laughs> now, um... There's a game that I was introduced to two weeks before uh, Grand Con. Uh, the game is called Miss Win. And I really, I'm calling it, I'm thinking this might be my favorite game of the year, of 2024. Now, I was interested in the game. I saw it the first time at, uh, I want to say, PAX a couple years ago. And I was interested in the aesthetics. It had these flying whales, these nice flying whale miniatures and these towers. And the art was beautiful, you know. And I was, you know, I was like, I, I want to see how this game plays, you know. But it, it was a, a pretty good price point. So I was like, I don't I, no, because I don't want to spend money on a game that I find out that I'm not going to care for. You know, not that much money. <laughs> so, of course, I was introduced to the game and I fell in love with it. Because the game is, is a pick up and deliver. It sells itself as a pick up and deliver game. But it's really a route building game. Because in this game, you have these flying whales. You're, you're moving across the map trying to deliver these different goods. Mushrooms, uh, oil, coal, uh, medicine, stuff like that. Thing is, when your whale moves from one location to another location, you have to spin krill. And krill is really, really tight in this game. But if your whale moves from a location that has another one of your whales or a tower already there, then you don't have to spin any krill. So it's really about building up your routes, building up towers and more whales to get to the point where you could travel from one side of the map to the other without spinning any krill. And there's also these uh, bonus cards, in-game bonus cards. If you uh, 
complete this particular route from one location, specific location to another specific location, then you will get a number of points at the end of the game. There's also achievements. Like if you're the first to uh, deliver a certain number of goods, then you get the, this achievement point or you're the first one to build all, out all three of your wells, you get those achievement points. And I mean, the game is just really, really, really good. Now, since I've, uh, so anyway, they had a board game outlet there who had a Kickstarter copy of this game. And I had to, I called Alicia. I said, they have Miss Wynn. I want to get Miss Wynn, you know, and it was the only game that I got. I mean, you know, the only big purchase. And I really love that game. Like I said, it's in the running. It's my favorite game of the year. I think it's going to win. Now, uh, other games, I like I said, I just, I think I pretty much talked about all the games that I played. I think the, one of my favorite games that I played there was Lure, the favorite new game. Another game that I actually demoed was a, a game called Forges of Ravenshire. Um, and pretty much this is a game where you are take on the role of, uh, uh, gosh, I forgot what they call those guys. But they, they make the metal, make swords and all that. <laughs> um, you are It's a dice placement game. You're going to take dice, you're going to place it out on the board, and then you're going to retrieve a dice and be able to do an action with that dice. So it kind of shows you, uh, has the same kind of feel of uh, Raiders of the North Sea, you know, where you're placing a worker and then retrieving a worker. But in this game, it's dice, you know. And so I really like this. And fortunately, my, my two of my uh, friends in my Friday Night Board Game group, they went and one of them picked up this game. So I will be looking forward to playing this game. Now, experiences, like I said, it's just playing games. Um, I love teaching games. I love teaching games. I cannot say that enough. Like, there was a, a couple of people that were playing harmonies, and it was I saw them looking through the rule book, and I asked them, would you mind if I taught you this game real quick? You know, because, you know, some people probably want to learn on their own, but they, was very, they were like, yeah, you can teach us. So I taught them how to play harmonies. You know, also, there was a game that I took that I loved with me because um, her name D. Jackson. Her name's Deona. She, um, she mentioned in a, a comment of one of my videos where she would like to try out Wonderland's War. And I knew she was going to Grand Con. So I loved Wonderland's War. And if you've seen it, that's a big box. But it was well worth it because I was able to teach Deona, her husband, Solomon, and uh, my friend Aisha, who is the co-owner of one of my other local board game stores, Opal Grove, you know, and I was able to teach them how to play the game. And we really had a great time <laughs> now, which goes to why I love board game conventions so much. One, playing games. The, you plan on just playing games. You get to see some new games, but you want to hook up with people and just play some games. You know, it, it's kind of like being within the jury of your peers type thing. You know, you're just playing games. The other thing I like is, like I said, since being in this board game hobby, I've met some really great people that don't live near me. <laughs> you know, they live all the way in California. They live all the way uh, in Florida or whatever. And these board game conventions give us a chance to get together. And if if not even only to play a game, but just to say, hi, how, how's your life been going? You know, and it's easy to do that. You could do that through socials and emails. But seeing that person in person... You know, it's just, it really does something for me. Um, and like, I just, like I said, I love teaching games. I love seeing the people that play these board games. I love spending time with them. And Grand Con was just so much fun. And I'm definitely doing it again next year. So, um, 
I'm not going to spend too much more time gushing. I just wanted to give you an idea of how Grand Con was. Uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a little, uh, some pictures to show you uh, what happened at Grand Con. But then after that, you know, if you like the contents of this video, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm Dwayne. This has been Blackboard Gaming, and I will see you next time.